our organization. Uh, okay, here we go. Just a little bit of background about our organization. Um, we've been a part of communities um, for 28 years. Fun fact, um, when Operation Hope first started in Los Angeles, California, after the LA riots, my father um, was one of the first joining members. And so I'm a part of a long legacy of um, community leader, lead, leaders and, and servants. So we've been around for a little while now. Um, as you can see, uh, we ha have done a few things, um, $4.5 million in services. We have uh, Hope Inside, business model, which allows us to go inside of banks and help um, our clients as well as do boots on the ground um, outreach as well. Um, we have about 26,000 volunteers and our programs um, extend to youth as well. So this is a little bit of, or this is a map of kind of where our locations are. We are um, looking to get those gray scare uh, squares filled in, but we are a national organization. And so while my role as the Atlanta headquarters financial well-being coach um, only extends to um, Atlanta and maybe a 30 mile radius, we have other uh, locations as well. So tell your family um, and let them know that we might be in their city. Um, so we have what we call a community uplift model. This um, means that we uh, affect households in a few different ways. Um, one of them is our Hope Inside Adult, and that looks like our programs like a credit money management program, um, our home ownership program. We have a small business function as well. Um, we have youth organizations or youth programs as well as disaster programs as well. Okay, um, so our, or a little bit more deep dive into our home ownership program. Um, the way that it works is we try to prepare you to um, get a home and we are with you with all phases. Um, our home ownership program has been around for a long time. We've um, been a part of generating over $1 billion in residential mortgages. We've empowered 11, over 11,000 uh, homeowners we, our network extends well beyond 200 lenders. And so you are in very capable hands um, when you uh, work with our organization. All right, so now I'm gonna just get into a little bit of what our presentation is gonna be about. Um, it's gonna be kind of general, um, a good introduction into home ownership and kind of uh, wanting to frame your mind as to what to think about when making the decision to be a homeowner and kind of the questions that you want to ask yourself and things that um, you want to really pay attention to. Okay, so the first thing that a lot of people should think about when they first are inquiring about purchasing a home for themselves or for their family um, is the advantages and disadvantages, right? A lot of the times you hear a lot of things from maybe your family members, your friends, especially now, um, in these times, interest rates are very low. People, a lot of great programs are here in Atlanta um, and in the South Fulton area where that allow more people to become homeowners. So it's good to step back and ask yourself some necessary questions like, uh, what are the things that I'll be benefiting from by getting a, a home loan and becoming a homeowner? And what are the things that I'm kind of giving up? Um, a few of the advantages of becoming a homeowner is a tax write-off, right? You can write off the interest of your property. Um, it's a long-term investment. Uh, that's really, really important um, as a frame of mind to thinking about home ownership, right? Um, stable housing costs. And so you're not as affected by things like the increase, the cost, increasing cost of living, um, like rental units maybe. Um, it creates wealth, another really, really big factor. Um, it can impact your legacy, um, as well as the value and equity increases, which build into the wealth and long-term investment um, portions. What are the disadvantages? Um, if you are 
a, a young professional who um, is moving somewhere every three months, home ownership might be something you wanna um, think about later in the future. Um, if you want to, a home ownership brings along the capacity um, to save, right? Um, there is no maintenance man uh, when you're a homeowner. Um, so saving for repairs and maintenance um, is important because that's what you're responsible for. Things like property taxes and additional costs um, are some of the diff's advantages. Um, we have, I guess the other two is the risk of foreclosure. Since it is an investment, the other side of that is that um, there's a risk of foreclosure as well as equity and value decrease. Um, and I wouldn't say you have to really look at your situation, to determine which option is best for you, right? Weighing your options is really, really important, right? So you think about your lifestyle, think about kind of what you're trying to do as somebody who is more established and based on the statistics um, that were stated, there's a lot of established individuals in South Fulton owning a home could be a really, really great step for you. Let's look at um, some more of the renting versus owning ideals. So there's certain things that you wanna consider, right? And there are processes within the homeownership um, process that allow you to answer a lot of these questions. So things like how much can I afford? Um, something like pre-qualification is a great step to take to answer that um, question. What will be my total cost of ownership? Um, thanks to a lot of the hard work that was done as a result of the 2008 housing crisis, um, closing district closures and um, things like that allow you to, oops, allow you to answer um, that question. And so the total cost of ownership is something that you should be able to have handy. Think about your income, right? One of the things that is important, um, even when renting, is the mentality of, uh, I want it to be 30%. Uh, of my income at the most. And that allows you to really think about your capacity. Um, how much money do I have saved? That is important when it comes to putting down payments for homes, but even more importantly, um, starting with a good savings for when you move into the home and um, there might be repairs or maintenance that you need to get done. So thinking about those type of disciplines that you have. What are my living expenses currently? And what will my living expenses be when I move into my home? I mean, how many years do I expect to live in my home? That is a really, really important question um, because the mortgages are usually 30 year terms. And so it's a long-term investment. And thinking about a game plan as to what you would do when you get the home is something that you should consider. Okay. Um, home ownership starts with you. Um, you wanna have a very solid plan when before thinking about purchasing a home um, you want to determine what do you need versus what do you want what is your urgency to move like how soon are you looking to move into a new place um, are you confident about your income how long have you been working at your job um, how much you have saved we talked about already what's your credit score and we'll get into that a little bit um, you want to own with a plan um, become financially disciplined our credit and money management program at operation hope is a one to two year program and we really help you uh, and coach you through the idea of saving and budgeting, right? Do we know how much money is coming in? Do we know how much money is going out? Can we forecast that and be disciplined with that? Um, your first home doesn't have to be a dream home. That's a really important point, right? You're building wealth, you're building um, equity and this is an investment and it could lead to other investments as well. Um, know how owning gives you equity that you can leverage. That's a really big and important piece. I've spoken to a few homeowners during this um, foreclosure kind of crisis or moratorium is getting coming up and stuff like that. And one of the things that I have learned is a lot of people don't know about the equity in their homes. And so um, they're giving options to do certain things. And because they don't understand the idea of how you build equity and what that is, um, they aren't able to navigate those spaces. Um, owning can open up financial options for you over time. That's a really, really, really important one. Just again, the idea of 
thinking about this as an investment and really um, going through other options and really planning out strategically um, what you would like to do. So let's start with the basics. What is a mortgage? Right? A mortgage is basically a agreement uh, to loan a certain amount of money for a specified term. Um, mortgages come in many different types um, and based on uh, your classifications and your qualifications, you will get uh, different types of mortgages or at least they'll, you'll be offered different types of mortgages. So things like credit score, things like um, veteran status, things like location impact the types of mortgages that are available. What is amortization? This is the idea of paying down your mortgage, right? When you get a loan, they'll give you an amortization schedule. I um, mean, it'll let you know every payment that you will be making per the date and kind of breaking down um, where those payments will be going. What kind of mortgages are there? Um, like I said, there's different options, right? There's FHA mortgages, there is conventional mortgages, um, there's uh, VA loans, there is USDA loans. So get out there and uh, learn all what is available uh, to you. And a lot of those options um, are determined again, kind of by your demographics. So what does a mortgage include, right? There's a term that is esoteric in the um, finance world called um, the PITI, and that is just your principal interest taxes and insurance. The principal is the amount of money that you're putting towards paying down your actual loan balance. Um, the interest is the amount of money you're paying to the bank for loaning you the money. The taxes is your property taxes, and that's determined by where you live and what city you live in. And your insurance is uh, determined really on what type of mortgage you get, but it um, is a, it helps the lenders to um, give you loans to people who haven't put 20% down. And so it secures um, the investment of the lender. These are four things that will determine the total payment, right? Mortgage payment um, that you will be receiving. And it will be uh, broken down pretty specifically. Uh, qualifying for a mortgage, let's get into that. One of the things that is big for qualifying for a mortgage is your credit score. Um, one of the things that is important to note is how your credit score is made up. Right, The biggest part of your credit score is your payment history. This is really the idea of um, any missed payments, any uh, collection accounts, um, any public negative public records, things like that um, affect your payment history. Right, It just shows how are you using your credit. Uh, total debt utilization, that is the second largest, and that is how much of the credit are you using? Um, credit is funny in that there are a lot of people out there that want you, want to loan you money, um, but they also are interested in how you use that money. Um, your length of credit history. So how long have you had the different types of credit that you have, right? Whether it be a credit card from a department store um, whether it be student loans, whether it be a car loan, how long have you, what is your track record and how long have you been um, using credit? That's uh, the next highest one. Account diversity, what types of credit do you have in your account, right? Do we only have a lot of department cards? Do we have different types of cards? Do we only have um, medical bills? Do we only have um, student loans, right? These are things that creditors look at. And your new credit, how often are you getting cards? Are you getting cards all at once? Things like that um, affect that new credit. And so this is an important piece. And it's, if you do things like um, Credit Karma, these are the lists that they give you to break down um, kind of how your credit is being used and how it's affected. Oh, sorry, my computer is freezing now. Okay, another 
one of the things that the lenders would like to know or things to consider when you are interested in purchasing a home is your employment. Um, so some of the, one of the things that lenders do is they do extensive research into um, you and your finances. And so they look at your employment. Where is your income coming from? Are you a full-time employee? Are you a part-time employee? Because most of your income come from overtime pay. Um, are you commission-based? Are you self-employed? Are you salaried or are you on hourly? Um, do you only work seasonally? Where does your income come from in terms of social security benefits, disability income, things like that um, impact the types of loans that you can receive and what they would call your um, character, your credit character. They look at your debt, what type, again, we just spoke about credit and then they look at your overall um, debt portfolio. So what kind of debt do you have? Is it installment debt? These are um, things that are paid on a fixed date at a fixed payment. So auto loans, student loans, right? You can get um, an installment debt, like a securitized loan to pay down credit cards, right? Uh, is it revolving debt? Is it a secure credit card? Is it a department store credit card, right? These are debts that accrue um, monthly, right? So they don't have a fixed um, amount. Um, payroll deductions are another things that they consider debt. Um, down payment. Um, so the down payment is basically, as described, just the amount of money that you put towards the principal, right? The total loan amount of the home. Um, the kind of standard down payment is 20%, but there's a lot of great programs that um, assist with down payments. And there are also a lot of good lenders based on your credit worthiness and your character of your credit, the capacity of your credit, what type of collateral you have um, that might allow you to put no money down. So. It's really about exploring your options when it comes to down payments and down payment assistance. So I guess a little bit deeper dive into your credit and kind of what it's used for, how it's used. Um, credit is just an indicator of your ability to pay debt. Again, we spoke about mortgages and kind of what those things are. And a mortgage, since a mortgage is a loan, it makes sense that lenders would like to see how you've handled um, debt in the past to see what they will be willing to give you in the future. Um, some of the negative credit indicators, I know we spoke about these a little bit, are late payments, bankruptcies, um, high outstanding debts, that goes into the legalization that we spoke about, and too many inquiries, that goes into the uh, new credit that we spoke about. Um, credit scores are on a range um, from as low as 300 to um, as high as 850. I know people try to make the ceiling um, at 800 credit score, but it does go beyond that um, to 850. Um, as you can see, as I hope you guys can see, there's a breakdown of kind of what the categories of credit are, right? Poor credit is three to 599. There are still programs that you can qualify for with a 580 credit score. 580 is kind of the um, floor at which um, organizations will link to like FHA. Uh, but even though you might fall into that category, there is still things available for you. And um, you have help, right? Organizations like Operation Hope will help you um, get your credit in order and prepared for you to purchase homes. Average falls um, to around uh, 670. So around 600 to 670, is average credit score. Um, from there, we have from 670 to about 700, maybe 715. That's like what they would consider good credit. And then anything over 720 is excellent. And that's where we want to get you guys. One of the um, missions of Operation Hope is to, in our credit and money management program that is, is to get our clients to um, our 700 credit score communities, right? Getting you at or above that 700 credit score. One of the things that 
we would think about again when we're purchasing a home it's not just the mortgage um, or the payment right it's or the down payment it's um closing costs as well um so these lenders have to work with people within their organization as well as other organizations um, to service you and help you out and so that service costs money and it's about three to five percent of your total mortgage um as you can see the list of closing costs are within here mortgage points um, fees for loan processing loan application credit reports all these things are rolled up into um, <clears throat> your closing costs which is just an additional cost for um, the home buying process. So some of the documents that are required, I guess before I would say that is, I would implore you to become organized with your finances and your financial documentation, um, because it's really important. We don't want to scramble around when we try to find um, different and try to find different documents once they're asked for. It's good to keep a solid record of kind of what you're looking for, especially if you're going to engage in the um, home buying process. And a few of these things would be your tax returns, your W-2 forms, your paycheck stubs, bank statements, um, and then of course your savings information. So just something to keep in mind, um, keep your financial documents in order, especially if you're preparing to purchase a home. One of the things that we also consider is um, creating a team of people, right? Um, I know that this term is thrown out there a little bit, um, but you want to get a realtor, somebody that can look for homes on your behalf, as well as provide consultation on um, the best homes in your area and in your neighborhood. Um, they help you speak to, or they're kind of act as the middleman between you and the seller. Um, and they uh, explain things to you and um, make you want to make sure you get somebody that makes home buying tangible and understandable. Um, they also frontline um, things like home inspections and um, things like homeowners insurance. They look into things like the escrow, which is just your taxes, the amount of taxes that you'll be paying, um, and take those things into consideration and talk through those things with you. So overcoming home ownership challenges. Um, and this is, again, something that Operation Hope provides, right? We have home ownership counseling. You're not in this thing alone, right? The transition from a renter to a homeowner is not um, impossible or insurmountable. It's something that you can do. And um, you have help out there um, if you need it. Um, traditional denial, your factors for Home ownership or things like credit challenges, right? Lack of, lack of savings, um, high debt to income ratio, which is the amount of debt that you have versus the amount of money that you bring in. Um, no down payment funds, but these things are not, again, insurmountable, right? These are things that you can get help for. And there are a lot of organizations that are out there willing to help. So um, what happens if you are wondering after you get the home? Um, or what should you be doing after you get the home? And it's a few um, things that we recommend, right? Save um, and organize all documentation. Maintain your home, that's a big one, right? It's an investment. Um, have regular seasonal home checkups. This is another important one when you're thinking about your home ownership plan, if you wanna sell, um, or even if you wanna keep it and increase that equity that we talked about, maintaining your home and really checking up on this, an important thing. Uh, make your mortgage payments on time. That's really, really important. Um, keep that credit up and stay vigilant with that. Um, incur no additional debt. I would annotate this and say bad debt. Um, incur no additional bad debt um, and avoid foreclosure and that can be done um, with organizations like Operation Hope as well. Here are a few home buyer resources. Right, HUD is a phenomenal resource um, that you can use that also goes into depth with some of the things that I spoke about, um, as well as the home buyer process, what types of mortgages you may qualify for, what the options are, things like that. 
Um, DIMS is another really good option when you want to look for different types of properties. Redfin um, is another um, property uh, location service as well. Um, I guess to close out, one of the things that Operation Hope likes to do is make sure you're informed about disaster and financial preparedness. There's COVID-19 was a disaster that we helped with this year, one that came out of nowhere. And so um, we want to make sure that you guys are aware and prepared. You can call that number there. Um, if you or any of your family members happen to be affected by any of the disasters, I know there's a lot of hurricanes and things like that happening now. Um, we have what's called our Hope Inside Disaster Coalition, and we deploy services as well as um, people to a lot of the locations of disasters. Um, this has been happening for quite a long time. Um, that's something we wanna make you guys aware about. Um, something that is pretty big is um, the DFR score. And that is basically your disaster financial recovery score. Right, anything can happen at any moment. I know um, the seasoned saints will call it the rainy day uh, fund. You want to make sure that you are prepared for um, anything that happens. And Operation Hope is a big proponent of that, and so it's something that we can talk through and help you with when it comes to things like your personal um, action plan to help you maintain and prepare for disasters that happen in the future. Um, the EFAC um, is another big thing. And we can discuss this offline. I'll have my contact information is something I can send you, but it's just your emergency financial first aid kit. And um, it, again, important for disasters. Um, these are, I kind of went through that already. Um, VI, the VITA program is important when it comes to getting your tax help. Um, this is for people who are a little bit older again our season saints you can get uh some of so you can get free tax help from um vita right the voluntary income tax assistance organization um that link there is available you can take a picture of it screenshot it if you know anybody that needs help with their filing their taxes um who are over 60 years of age make sure to let them know that this is a resource for them if you're one of them this is a resource for you. Um, again, I have my contact information. I can share that as well. One of the things that is really, 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 really important that we also push here at Operation Hope is the earned income tax credit. Um, this is something that everybody should take advantage of. Um, and if you do do your taxes with people like HR Block um, or TurboTax, they, I think they automatically have this built into the qualifications, but it's basically uh, money that you can get back for being a diligent and hard working individual. Um, of course, there are certain stipulations in terms of what amount of money that you make um, month annually and your family size. And again, this is something that we can talk about later, but I wanna put this bug in your ear. I want you to, guys to take a look at it and learn about it because you can be leaving money on the table that's owed to you um, in the future. These are kind of the qualifications. Um, again, take a picture. Um, if you need to hit me afterwards and we can kind of go through it. This is my contact information and I am opening up the floor to any questions that anybody has. Thank you so much, Craig. That was really, really great information. Um, if you guys have a question, you can either unmute yourself or write it in the chat and I can um, read it off. We did have one question and I'm, I'll read it because I'm not too sure if this would go for you as well, uh, maybe Tracy, but uh, Kara wanted to know, are there any special programs for healthcare workers that you know of? I don't know of any programs specifically for healthcare workers. There probably is some out there, especially with the times that we live in now. Tracy, did you do you know of any programs? Okay, good. Yes, and I'm going to talk about it. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Okay. I have um, a question. Okay. Um, when you 
I'm sorry I'm driving, but when you pre-qualify, what exactly does that mean in terms of qualifying, if that makes any sense? Yeah, I think I understand your question. Um, Pre-qualification basically um, allows you to look at what range you'll be able to purchase houses, the price range you'll be able to purchase housing, right? So there's two type of qualification. Well, qualifications, I feel like is a confusing word, but there's two types of processes that you go through, right? That's pre-qualification, the initial process. They tell you how much money um, you may be able to qualify for and they advise you with that. And then you have your pre-approval. Um, that pre-approval number gives you the actual amount of money that you'll be given um, upon finding a home that you want. So the pre-qualification is just a good estimate about what you can qualify for in terms of mortgage. Um, and then you have the pre-approval process, which is separate that ties you to a bank and um, gets you the opportunity to, to actually get that money. Does that make sense? Yes. So once you're pre-approved, you still have to go through other process of getting the money, right? Is that how it works? Once you're pre-approved, you just go get the property. And then you and the seller, well, your realtor really and the seller, um, go through the closing process. So okay. by the time you get, during the pre-approval process, they will have your all of your financial information. Um, and they'll make a determine on what you have been approved for, for the amount of money that you get. And then you take that to the seller. Thank you so much. Yes, that was a great, great question. Um, and we did get another um, question in the uh, direct message, um, but I'll go ahead and answer that. Yes, this seminar will be um, available for replay. I did um, record it. So we will make sure that you guys get the recording um, following this, as well as a survey to let us know what you enjoyed and how we can improve moving forward. So that will be in your emails that you will receive tomorrow morning for that. Um, another question we have is, do you have any realtors you could recommend? So Operation Hope does work with lenders and realtors. It will be better, again, to kind of look at the, uh, I'm sorry, contact information that I have here. And I can we can talk one-on-one -on -one about you specifically, what you're kind of looking for, and then get into kind of your personal finance. And I can kind of link you with um, realtors. But yeah, I have virtuals that I know as well as Operation Hope is pretty well connected um, with the realtors. Okay. And then last question we had from Latasha. Good evening. Is there a difference between this program and NACA? Um, I think that'll probably be more of a question for Tracy. Am I right, Greg? Yeah, okay. Yeah, with, so with um, Operation Hope, with this particular piece, this was as far as getting your finances together in order to get to the process that we're about to go into with Tracy. Um, I can speak with to Operation Hope. Me personally, I went through their entrepreneurship and credit and money management um, when I graduated from college, and it was a very awesome um, program to get into and really set the foundation for me financially for me to be able to go on and purchase a home. So definitely take down um, Craig's information here. Um, Operation Hope is super big here in Atlanta, the Atlanta metro area, and they will definitely be able to help you in multiple areas of your life, not just only um, home ownership. So if there's not any more questions for Craig, we will move along to Tracy. And thank you again so much, Craig, for your time. And I'm pretty sure you'll be getting a lot of emails um, following this. So we do appreciate you for taking the time. I hope so. Thank you guys um, for having me. I do have to hop on that flight, but um, <laughs> here is my information. Please, please, please take a picture of it if you're interested, hit me. Um, I'm a part of a large network of coaches and we'll be ready to um, help you in time. Tracy, I am glad they got this recorded because I am going to be watching your stuff when I get to the crib. So you guys awesome. um, have a good night. Okay. Thank you as awesome. well.
And then while we're waiting for um, Tracy, I saw another comment in the chat, um, Champagne, we will, um, I'll copy and paste this uh, question and I'll send it to Craig if you don't already have his information um, because he does have to leave. So I will definitely get that information to him. Awesome. Okay, so are you able to see the PowerPoint okay? Yep, it's perfect. All right, so once again, guys, good evening. And Taryn, I wanna thank you so much again for inviting me to be able to share um, about the resources that the state of Georgia offers first-time home buyers. First off, I wanna give you just a little history about the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. Um, we've been about, uh, providing assistance to first-time home buyers since the late 1970s. Well, something happened in the mid-90s. The governor and the General Assembly merged Georgia Housing and Finance Authority with the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. And that's when the Georgia Dream Program was really birthed. Um, Georgia Housing and Finance Authority, we carry a triple A bond rating. Uh, we're only one of nine states that carries a triple A bond rating. And what that means is, we have a strong standing in the bond market. The Georgia Dream Program is continuously funded. So whenever you contact our office and ask, does the Georgia Dream Program has funding available? Yes, we do. And those, the program is continuously funded through those tax, tax exempt bonds. But I wanna talk about a first time home buyer. Um, the Georgia Dream Program is the only state assistance program to work with first-time home buyers. Um, it covers all 159 counties in the state of Georgia. So by de definition of a first-time home buyer, guys, it's someone that has never owned a home or someone that has not had interest or ownership in a property in the last three years. Now, with Georgia Dream, you cannot own any other real estate at the time of closing on a Georgia Dream loan. So, which means if you inherited a property and even though you don't have a mortgage on it, that existing home will have to be sold or quit claimed prior to closing on a Georgia Dream loan. Now, the program has household income limits. So we're looking at every dime that comes into the household, and we're going to take a look at those household income limits. Uh, we also have a sales price limit. Now, the Georgia Dream Program targets uh, the low to moderate income borrower. There are second chance opportunities, guys, if you've owned a home within the last three years and you want to still take advantage of the Georgia Dream Program if you're purchasing in one of those targeted counties. So asset limits, as I mentioned, the Georgia Dream Program targets the low to moderate income borrower. So an applicant cannot have more than $20,000 or 20% of the purchase price, whichever is greater. So when we're talking about liquid assets, we're talking about what's in your checking and your savings accounts. So retirement accounts are not taken into consideration. So if you are sitting with $100,000, in your uh, retirement accounts. Rest assured, you are still eligible for the Georgia Dream Program. Now, the way the Georgia Dream Program divides the state with our income limits and our purchase price limits, there are uh, two categories. You have what's called the Atlanta MSA. And guys, that stands for the Metropolitan Statistical Area. So if you see on the screen, essentially that's Metro Atlanta. So you're going to have higher income limits and higher purchase price limits within the Atlanta MSA. And outside of that, everything else is considered statewide. But let's look at the Atlanta MSA. So for one to two person household, your income cannot exceed $84,000. For three or more persons, the maximum household income is $96,000 and the maximum purchase price is $325,000. So that's regardless if someone is going on a loan or not. 
the total household income cannot exceed that amount. So as I mentioned, then we have what's called statewide. So everything that was outside of those 25 counties are uh, the stated amounts. So the one to two family household is 72,000, three or more persons is 83,000 and the maximum purchase price is 275,000. So most of everyone on this call, I'm assuming uh, lives in the South Fulton area or the metropolitan Atlanta area. So you would adhere to those prices within the Atlanta MSA. Now we need to talk about the down payment assistance requirements. So first off, some of the things that I'm gonna say may sound vaguely familiar to you uh, with the information that Craig just uh, presented. So the Georgia Dream Program works in conjunction with our first mortgage. So that's your FHA that he mentioned, uh, VA, USDA, we have uh, conventional as well. So FHA, VA, USDA, and uninsured conventional. All of our loans are 30 year fixed rate. Now, an applicant must contribute a minimum of $1,000 into the transaction. But guys, when we talk about this $1,000 into the transaction, when you are looking for a property and the seller tells you, selling agent says, uh, the seller wants you to put up earnest money, right? Let's just say your earnest money is $1,000. You've met the minimum requirement for Georgia Dream. But this could be rural Georgia. And earnest money is only maybe, let's say, $500. You still can use the appraisal because the lender is going to definitely make sure that that home is appraised. You can't close without an appraisal. So let's just say the appraisal is $300. We have $500 from earnest money, $300 from the appraisal. Well, we also know we're not going to purchase a home without getting it inspected, right? So we, we're gonna get a home inspection. Well, we'll say the home inspection is $200. So now we put all of those monies together to create the $1,000 into the transaction. Now, I don't want to sit on this uh, call and think, okay, all I need is a, I don't want you to think that all you need is $1,000 and you can obtain a home. Now, maybe five years ago, this was true before we got into a seller's market, but you must be prepared if a seller is not going to um, help you with your closing costs to contribute towards your closing costs, you're going to be responsible for making up the difference and also is going to be based upon your price point. So we're going to go over the types of assistance that we offer. So starting off with the assistance, well, let me back up for a second. Our 30-year fixed rate, so that's the first mortgage that I just went over, that 30-year fixed rate, our interest rate right now, because Georgia Dream sets the interest rate, is 2.5%. So your mortgage payments are going to be based off of that 2.5%. Now, that is subject to change, but that is what the rate is today. Now, let's talk about our assistance. The assistance is a 0% interest loan. There's never a monthly payment on the assistance. So the Georgia Dream Program, guys, is a loan, is not a grant. Whenever you sell your property, refinance it, or you no longer occupied as a primary residence, the assistance is going to have to be paid back. You can stay in your home for 30 years. You've never refinanced, but you are always going to have that lien, which is considered a soft second or a silent second on your property until that assistance is paid back. But once you pay back the assistance, it actually goes into our pool so we can help the next generation of first time home buyers. So these are our assistance options. First, we have our standard which is $7,500 in assistance. If you qualify for Georgia Dream, guys, you automatically qualify for the $7,500 in assistance. But we have the question, do you have anything for healthcare workers? Well, there is a $2,500 bump. 
uh, when it comes to our PN option. PN stands for protectors, educators, and nurses. But hear me clearly, we talk about PN, the PN option in a really broad context. Our focus is more so of, on your employer as opposed to your position. And I wanna give you a couple examples. Let's say you're on the call and you work in healthcare, but you are the intake person at your at Grady Hospital, right? So you're not a doctor, you're not a nurse, you're the intake person. Or you can even be, let's say the custodian. Because you're paid by Grady Hospital, you're eligible for $10,000 in assistance. The same if it were a bus driver for Fulton County School Systems. You're paid by Fulton County School System as a bus driver. You are still eligible for the same amount as an administrator or a teacher. You can be the mechanic for the Fulton County Police Department. You're paid by the police department. You're eligible for that $10,000 in assistance. And then we have our choice option which is $10,000 in assistance as well. But with the choice option, if you're disabled or if you have a disabled family member that is going to be residing in your home that has that disability, regardless if they're going on the loan or not, you are still eligible for $10,000 in assistance. Now, granted, that person that has the disability will have to prove the easiest way to show if they have a social security awards letter or even a social security denial letter indicating that they have a disability, but they're not receiving payments. Now, home buyer education is a requirement of the Georgia Dream program. You're a first time home buyer. We want to make sure that you understand the home buying process. So as Craig mentioned, Operation Hope conducts a home buyer education workshop. Now, typically this is on a Friday or a Saturday, it's an eight hour course. But when COVID happened, uh, they started to do a lot of these courses virtually. But you also, you can do it one-on-one -on -one counseling or we have a self-paced course that's $50 through eHome America that takes you through the entire home buying process. Next, this is the Georgia Dream Overview. So you must have a middle credit score of 640 or greater to begin the process. Guys, if your credit score is 639, you cannot start the process. You can't get an exception. So 640 or greater is where you start. So essentially, how do you get that 640 or greater credit score? We're looking at all three credit reporting agencies, TransUnion, Equifax experience. We're taking away the highest score, taking away the lowest score, and that middle score, regardless of the credit reporting agency, must be 640 or greater. But what if you're on the call today and you don't have that credit score of 640? We do have a program that's called Ready, Set, Go. It's a financial literacy course. And what it does, it pairs you with a housing counselor. It assesses your credit profile. And hopefully after that third meeting, you're where you need to be at 640 or greater to begin the process. So we start off 640 middle credit score, making sure that we attend a home buyer education course. And then we need to get pre-qualified. We need to get pre-qualified by a Georgia Dream participating lender. We're the government, so we can't lend directly to you, but you will have to go through a lender that makes up our network. Now we have, a, we have as of today, we have 75 lenders that make up the Georgia Dream Network. So what happens, you'll contact a lender, letting the lender know that you need to get pre-qualified for a home loan, just as you would do in the traditional lending process. With the exception, you're gonna let the lender know you also want to use the Georgia Dream Pro, uh, Program. So guys, the lender actually serves as your primary point of contact. They're gonna work with you throughout the entire home buying process. 
from application to closing, letting, uh, providing you with all of the necessary documents that you need for Georgia Dream. So any questions that you may have as it pertains to the program, that lender is going to be your primary point of contact, but also know you still have the Georgia Dream program as a resource. Okay, so the lender gets you pre-qualified and that's when they tell you based upon your credit, your debt, your income, how much home you qualify for. That's when you engage with your realtor, you go out and you select your property, still the same traditional lending process. Georgia Dream does not select properties for you. You select your property. And once you've selected your property, that's when your the lender can go into our system to reserve funds for you. So they can go in the system, they're gonna reserve funds for that first mortgage, for what you qualify for, and then the assistance as well. But a lender cannot go into our system to reserve funds without a fully executed sales contract. And that is when the clock starts ticking for Georgia Dream, okay? So on average, it takes about 45 days to go through the Georgia Dream process. That's not a lot of time. So I don't want you to think, oh, this is a lengthy process. It's not gonna take you it should take you less than six weeks, okay? So once the file is fully underwritten by the lender, it's gonna come to my office. It comes to the Georgia Department of Community Affairs for what's called a compliance review. On average, it takes about 72 hours to get uh, the, the file reviewed and the conditions cleared. So once that process is completed, the file goes back to the lender with your clear to close, with your firm approval, which means this loan is um, eligible now for Georgia Dream and eligible for closing. And so now you transition. You're no longer that applicant. You're no longer that borrower. Now you are a homeowner. So guys, here's my contact information. And I know that we're going to open it up for questions, but I definitely wanna make sure you take a snapshot of the screen. If you have any questions regarding the Georgia Dream process, use me as a resource. That's why I'm here um, as the outreach coordinator. So whatever questions you have regarding the home buying process and using Georgia Dream, you're more than welcome to contact me uh, or my office and our staff will be available to assist. So guys, I wanna thank you for your time and Taryn, if there's any questions, uh, we can open it up. Okay, awesome. So we just, um, we answered the one about healthcare. Um, another one we had is how do we compete with these investors that are buying with cash? What is the likelihood that sellers will work with a first time homeowner? It happens, guys, when the market really started to shift and we heard that, and, and we've seen a drop. I'm not going to lie to you, there's been a major drop um, in our reservation numbers because of competing with cash offers. But what I can tell you, I see reservations every single day. That's a conversation really that you're going to have to have with your realtor. Um, if they're disclosing, not disclosing, you know, how, if you're using down payment assistance or not. But I do want you to know that every single day, our reservation numbers, just to kind of give you a gauge, where we may have done 15 reservations a day, which means 15 contracts were uh, reservations were reserved because we had 15 contracts. So whereas we were seeing 15 a day, we're now seeing maybe six or seven a day, but there's opportunities out there. There are sellers that are willing to work with DPA programs. It may be a couple of offers that you have to submit, but again, don't lose hope uh, because there are sellers that's willing to accept contracts with someone using DPA. 
Yeah, and I think that's a good point, um, Tracy, um, because I think, can we just um, clarify a little bit, because we're getting questions about, can you use a realtor with the Georgia Dream Program, as far as exactly what, how the Georgia Dream Program fits in the home buying process? Yep. I'm going to stop sharing the screen just so I can um, see you and all of the other questions. Okay, so uh, can you, the first question was, can you use a realtor, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're not restricted when it comes to a realtor. You can use anyone that you want to use to work with you to select a property. Georgia Dream will not restrict you. Um, now, as far as a lender, you have to go with a Georgia Dream participating lender. Now, we work with large banks. Uh, we work with small mortgage companies. Some are by larger banks. Uh, I think the largest right now is Truist, which was Legacy, BB&T, and SunTrust. Uh, in addition to that, we work with Regions. We work with uh, Fifth Third. I can't think of a lot of them. Uh, Ameris Bank. Ameris is actually one of our largest uh, uh, lenders that we're working with. So you're not going to have any difficulty when it comes to trying to find a participating lender. Gotcha. Okay. And then another question we have is, what's the best way to get an accurate credit score? I sometimes get two different numbers from my credit card and loan company. The best way to get your credit score is through a financial institution. So if it's not through a financial institution, it's partnering with a HUD approved counseling agency like Craig and find out what your credit score, because Credit Karma, they're going to give you um a gauge of where you are, but your true credit score is going to come from a financial institution. Gotcha. Awesome. And then the next question we have is, is, will we have new homes to choose from with, I guess I'm assuming with the Georgia Dream Project? Absolutely. Because remember, you select your property, right? So right. Georgia Dream, the lending process, guys, is not going to change. You select your property. So you can do, this could be new construction. It can be an existing home. If you choose to do a condo, a town home, it's a single family home, but I do wanna add, it cannot be a duplex, can't be a quadruplex or a triplex. It cannot be a manufactured home. It can be a modular home, which is considered an industrialized dwelling, but it can't be a manufactured home. But you control that. But to answer your question, absolutely, it can be a new construction. DR Horton is one of our large, they're one of our top producing lenders. And they're also one of City of South Fulton's shameless plug um, <laughs> builders. We have a lot of DR Horton subdivisions here in the City of South Fulton. So um, if you do like the Georgia Gym Project and want to go through them, I did not know that they had their own lending. So that's great to know. Great information. D um, uh, DR Horton has DHI mortgage. So that's okay. a lender. Okay, yes. Um, and then if you go on Zillow or Redfin, I believe Craig um, said earlier, you can actually type in South Fulton, Georgia, and it'll solidify it down to our region. If, if I did see from the poll, we did have about 11 people that are actually interested in just for city of South Fulton. So you definitely can do that. Um, and what she means by manufactured homes is trailer homes. Um, so ranch style homes, um, Ms. Brenda would, would qualify because that's a style of a single family home. If was there any more questions, um, if you aren't in the chat, you can unmute yourself and ask your question at this time. Okay. Well, I think I thoroughly enjoyed that presentation, Tracy. I wish that was, um, you know, I definitely know, sorry, that we did. I see a lot of things in the chat about recording. Yes, if for you, if you joined us a little later, we did record from the beginning. Um, so we will have it up and in your emails um, in the morning, as well as with a survey on how you enjoyed the seminar. So we definitely did record it from the beginning. Um, I wanted to take this time. Thank you so much, Tracy. If we, if we do, oh, let's see, I think we might have, okay, you're saying thank you. If we do have um, any questions for Tracy, do you have a little bit of time to hang in the chat? 
for a minute, Tracy? Yes, okay. I do. Awesome. Because um, I'm going to go over briefly um, some information about the city of South Fulton. Um, if you haven't already, and can, you could please um, fill out our poll over here um, as far as um, if you are a first time home buyer and if you are looking at specifically city of South Fulton, uh, we are a almost five year old city now. Uh, we came out of unincorporated Fulton County. Um, we are approximately a little bit over 85 square miles. Uh, we have six police precincts. We are home to the Wolf Creek Amphitheater. So I'm pretty sure if you are a music lover, um, you've probably at least heard of Wolf Creek if you have not um, been there yet. Uh, we have 17 parks totaling over almost 700 acres and loads and loads of amenities here at the city of South Fulton. Um, one of the things I do wanna share with you guys is our residence guide. And this is fairly new. Um, I am one third of the team of communications here at the city of South Fulton and my lovely colleagues put this together. Um, you can find this on our website and I will link it in the chat for those of you that are interested, but it is pretty much our go to guide if you are interested in um, making the city of South Fulton home for you. So with the city of South Fulton, we are um, encompassed with seven districts. And these are our current city council members in each of those districts. We range all the way from Cascade Road over to Old National, down to Cascade Palmetto, all the way out to Oakley Industrial Boulevard. This is pretty much our whole entire area. So you can be in uh, a city environment over on Old National, or you can be have a nice country living with acreage, if that's your thing, down in District 4 off of Fairburn um, Road and Cascade Palmetto. So we are a unique city in the fact that you can be in the hustle and bustle, you can be in the suburbs, and you can be in the country all at the same time. Um, so this is just a brief about our history as well as about our community. Uh, like I said in the beginning, we are definitely growing and expanding by being just a baby city, really. Um, so we are adding to and listening to our residents every day as far as what we can do to improve. Uh, these are our current utilities uh, providers. We get our water and sewer through the city of Atlanta. Our electricity is through Greystone and Georgia Power, as well as gas services, as you see listed here. Um, and also our trash and recycling home internet. Um, so with the city of South Fulton, we do understand you might wanna build your dream home. So we definitely have our permitting um, and zoning uh, committees here at the city of South Fulton that will help you make your dream a reality if you don't uh, plan on buying or purchasing an existing home. Um, so these are just a few of our public safety services, of course, our police, and we have, these are all of our police precincts here to keep our city safe. You might have seen on the news, we've been really um, going at it as far as um, keeping crime down and low in our, in our cities, because we know that is definitely um, a main factor when you're choosing where you want to live. So these are all of our amenities and services here. Uh, we also make it very easy for you to alert us if there's potholes, if there are trees down, lines down, power. Uh, we are definitely technologically advanced. Uh, we want to make sure our residents can get to us and let us know the information in real time. If you have a family or are thinking of starting a family, our school system is um, provided through Fulton County Public Schools. And these are some of the schools that are uh, serviced here in our city. And then we have loads and loads of parks, like I was saying, over 700 square, I'm sorry, acres, excuse me. And these are just a few of those here, as well as our brand new, um, and stay tuned for our new grand open if you are into tennis, uh, that will be coming up in the month of November. Um, it's pretty much completely gutted and renovated our new tennis center. So we're really proud about that. And just as you can see, we're just expanding and we have loads and loads of arts and culture for you as well. Uh, we do wanna take this time just briefly and let me let's stop sharing. And um, wanna make sure that you guys stay connected with us. All of this information, including the residence guide, and I will put that in the chat right now. Um, is on our website. So please take the time and visit cityofsouthfultonga.gov. And you can find out everything I just said in depth, plus more there, as well as joining our email list. 
if you want to find out the news and um, just the happenings every two weeks is when it goes out for the city of South Fulton. Um, news, culture, uh, safety tips, any things of that nature, especially if you are looking to make that move and hitting up either Craig or Tracy in the near future to pursue um, your home ownership dream. Uh, home ownership, and I'm sure Tracy, you can speak to this, is one of those things I'm pretty sure there is um, it's a big bucket list to do for a lot of people. And I really find it just amazing that, especially with the city of South Fulton, we are 92% African American. Um, and out of that, we're greatly um, with more on the home ownership side than renters. So making that dream a reality, whether it's through Georgia Dream, whether it's through um, any other means, is definitely, definitely great. And the resources are out there. I actually did, sorry, have another question, Tracy. I forgot. Um, one lady asked about what's the difference between your program and NAC. I do just want to, for you to speak to that because I do know that that's another program. Mm -hmm. I know uh, NACA works primarily with Bank of America. I do know that it is an assistance um, program. I think where we uh, differ mostly is Georgia Dream uh, the state is the investor, as opposed to uh, they work directly with Bank of America. So I'm not sure um, all of their criteria, but when your loan closes with a lender, a participating lender, it is purchased by Georgia Housing and Finance Authority. So we're the investor, which allows us to be able to offer you that low interest rate as well as a low cost loan. Okay, awesome. Were there any last words or questions or comments that anyone had before we close this evening? Um, hi, I have one. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I, um, I just wanted to encourage everyone to try this because my husband and I went through a program very similar to this about 20 years ago. And what happened is because we had been through the program and we, all, we were pre-approved, so the lady was trying to decide who to sell the house to because we were already pre-approved and she knew we had the money, we were able to buy a house and I live in South Fulton too. So I told my daughter about the program because at that time we were just starting out pretty well and it helped us get a house in South Fulton and it was kind of hard because it was the same thing. Um, it was a hot market for sellers but because we already had the money and she didn't have to wait for the bank to do anything except she knew it, we were able to get a house. So I encourage people to try it. It was really great for us. Thank you. That's awesome testimony, definitely. Um, and like we said, um, and I didn't even know about the healthcare incentives, that's great. And even educators and then the fact that it's attached to your employer is phenomenal. That opens the doors for so many people that are in those industries that might think, you know, that they can't, you know, achieve home ownership. So Absolutely. that is really awesome. So Tracy left her contact information. We also put Craig's contact information um, in the chat earlier. And like I said, you will receive the recording of this um, seminar tomorrow morning, as well as a survey. And if there's nothing else, we want to bid you adieu. And I want to thank you so much to Tracy and Craig for volunteering their time and knowledge to help uh, the residents and future residents here at City of South Fulton. Awesome. Thank you again for having me. No problem. Have a good night, everyone. Look forward to hearing from you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Good Have night. a good night. Good, good night. night.